right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another event with Let's Move by United Healthcare, where we aim to keep you engaged in healthy, fun activities to help you maintain a healthy lifestyle. You can keep up with what we have going on by visiting letsmovebyuhc.com and logging in with your United Healthcare username and password to see upcoming events, educational information, and more. Um, I'll type this information into the uh, Q&A area for you so you have that. You can also access the site by logging into your United Healthcare member portal and clicking on the Health and Wellness tab in the blue ribbon across the top of the page, and then scrolling down to see the Let's Move button. And again, I'll type this information into the Q&A section for you. Um, the Q&A section, depending on the device that you're on, may be located in different places. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to type into the Q&A section, and we will answer those questions as they come in. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, also feel free to type those questions in there as well. So today we have another virtual teaching kitchen with registered dietitian Carrie Rose and Chef John, Chef John Olms focused on eating for a rainbow of health benefits and the importance of getting those variety of colors into your eating style. So I will turn it over to, to Carrie and Chef John. Thank you. All right, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Joe. Hi, I'm Carrie, registered dietitian. I'm excited to be here today for today's virtual uh, event. So fruits and vegetables, they are the foundation of a healthy diet, yet they tend to be under-consumed. So Chef John has a great lineup today with a recipe featuring more fruits and vegetables than I can count on one hand. Um, he's covering a <laughs> rainbow of nutrients, a rainbow of colors. It's gonna be fantastic. Chef, are you ready to get cooking? I think we're I think we're getting ready to get going here. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, I'm here in Minneapolis or Minnetonka, technically. So we are uh, coming to you from our same uh, location that we've been. But um, yeah, uh, Carrie, exactly right here. We got a rainbow of uh, lots of different kinds of fruits and vegetables here, and we'll, so we're going to make an actual. Um, kind of like a grain bowl type of thing. Um, but I've got kind of set it up, do a little twist on it, set it up more like a, almost like a buffet style so that you would have, you know, you could have like a party outdoors or, um, or if you're having um, a big group of people, you can set it up on a tray. Uh, and I can show you how to do, do all that. And then people can, you know, walk by and grab a little bit of this, grab a little bit of that. Um, and, um, that's a great way to uh, make use of all these wonderful colors that we got going on here coming into season now, uh, some tropical fruits. We've got some mango here, of course, and some uh, oranges there. Um, kind of going through the rainbow of colors here, we've got a red, an orange, a purple, and a green. Um, and that's pretty much what we're going to be do focusing today is ba basically uh, showing how to uh, prep these. Uh, get some fun different flavors in there um and then we're going to also have uh, a brown rice um which is something you can substitute out um into any kind of grain some quinoa or whatever but we have today we have some brown rice that um not going to show you how to make the brown rice but we we have that um that's pretty standard uh, and then we'll have a couple of chicken breasts that are that's some nice chopped fresh herbs and lemon I'll show you how to we'll do a little bit of uh, sauteing with that um, in combination with cooking them in the cooking them in the oven. So um, to get started here, I think we're going to start out with the with the red um, red version here. So all these recipes are in uh, should be in your handout or your um, or will be uh, available to you eventually. Um, so. I'm kind of going in reverse order here, but the red one, the red um, uh, vegetables here are going to have a little bit of uh, vinegar in them. So they kind of want to uh, be more like a pickling. So that takes a little bit longer for that to sort of marinate. So that's why I'm going to start with some of these vegetables to marinate them. Um, and then we'll go on from there. Um, uh, so I'm going to clear, clear the deck a little bit, uh, prep up. What we have here, we've got some beets already done up for us. Uh, beets usually take a little bit longer to cook in the uh, in the in the uh, as boiling or roasting. I think the recipe calls for you to wrap them in 
uh, foil and then roast them off until they're soft and then you can cut them up and then put some vinegar on them. Um, so, but I've done that in advance so that we're all, um, we're all good to go here. We don't have to wait around for them to cook. Um, finish clearing the decks here. All right. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually put everything right in this bowl and, uh, pour this, uh, vinegar over here when I get it all prepped up. Um, so I'm just going to cut along. I've probably seen this before on a couple other, uh, uh shows that we've done. Um, so you, I'm cutting around these little, uh, indentations, uh, membranes, uh, just so I get all the, uh, all the red color. And I'm just going to do enough for, uh, I'm doing two chicken breasts. So I'm going to be doing, um, enough for about for, for two people here. So I'm cutting, cutting them about the same size as the beets here, just so that um, they are, you know, they're not too big and too unwieldy to eat, uh, and they marinate a little faster if they're a little smaller. All right. So remember our stick? Well, these, are, these could be a plank. I think we've gone through this before. A plank, stick, and uh, dice. Plank, stick, and dice. I'll just do this other one here. Gary, can you tell, uh, talk to a little bit about the um, the, the red, um, sort of all the different red color and what, uh, what, what's going on? Why? What's so great about yeah, red? So you know? <laughs> beets, they have their natural color comes from betalines, and that is an antioxidant. So um, I love the selection Ooh. you have here um, with the bell peppers. I must say, Chef, I think I've been cutting the bell pepper wrong for 30 years. So thank you. <laughs> wow. Um, can I ask a question? Um, what is something our um, guests could do with the beet greens? Because um, those have a lot of fiber and vitamins that are also great for oh, great. our health, too. Sure. I would, I would actually use that in a, almost like a quick saute. That's like one of my favorite things to do is to take some uh, greens, beet greens, kale, chard, all those types of things uh hearty leafy greens and you know chop them up and throw a little garlic in with an olive oil and toss them uh maybe add a little bit of water or maybe a little white wine or a little juice of some sort to give it a little extra uh, extra little flavor a little salt and pepper and just let them wilt down uh, and then just use them as a, as a sort of a side dish to whatever you whatever you're eating i mean you could actually use that um, in what we're doing today too, as part of your, you know, your green color. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one way to do it. Um, you could add it into a, uh, like a lentil soup would be awesome. Um, yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of other things I would do. I, I like to toss those types of greens in with pasta as well. Um, that would be a great, that'd be a great, um, addition to, um, just like a, like a sauteed pasta dish. Yeah, definitely. Definitely um, don't throw those greens away. All right, let's go into some red onion here. I'm just going to uh, prep that up a little bit here. I'm not a big fan of, of, of uh, raw onion, um, but I like a little bit. And using the red onion here, too, is going to be a little less pungent than like a, a white or a yellow onion. Um, and if you don't want, the, if you don't like the onion at all, just leave it out. I mean, you don't have to. Uh, and it, that kind of goes for this whole uh, the whole show today. I and mean, there's uh, uh, the point is to have a lot of different uh, colors in your diet. Um, obviously, the the more colors you have, the uh, the greater uh, nutritional value um, and and what the things that we've uh, already discussed today uh, in your diet. So. Um, if you don't like the onions, leave the onion out. Um, concentrate on some of the other 
some of the other colors. I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, a little bit of a red onion here. All right, so and we'll throw a few beets in there. And this uh, the recipe calls call for some red wine vinegar, and I have it diluted down with a little water. If you have straight vinegar, it's going to get really, um, um, really, really hard to eat. <laughs> uh, you're going to be really, 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 um, really sour. So you want to. Would there be any other vinegars we could use? Oh yes, of course. Uh, yeah. Rice wine vinegar would be great in there. Um, if you have a like an infused vinegar, like a, like a raspberry vinegar, that sort of thing, that would be great to use. Um, you could even use some regular, you know, run-of-the-mill white vinegar. I mean, you don't have to use a, a fancy little red or one of those uh, marinated or, or infused um, vinegars. But, um, yeah, just the point is just to sort of uh, get the feel of, of, of pickling. Um, dish. And if you, if you wanted to... If you're into it and you really want to pickle these, that would be an, uh, a great way to, you know, use these vegetables in in how you normally pickle. All right. So I just tossed it with a little bit, and that's probably about a quarter of a cup for this whole thing here. So I've got that. You can see a little bit in the bottom there already that uh, liquid starting to uh, come out of the vegetables. Uh, so that is going to be uh, marinating there for a little while while we prep the other items here. I'm going to set this aside. And give the, and, and talk about, you know, this color has this and this color has that. Um, but I think it's, I think it's important to, to kind of understand the, what makes these colors and what how that helps, the antioxidant wise, um, and, and other health benefits. So um, I guess my the the short question is what what's up with orange? You know, what, are we moving on to the orange what, color what? now? Are you following the yeah. rainbow intentionally? Yeah, you went red, I don't know, now orange. orange. Yeah, it's sort of that sort of that way. Um, <laughs> Well, when we're talking about carrots and that orange color, um, yeah, those are going to be coming from the beta carotene. Those are critical for eyesight and eye health. Um, we also have the mangoes, uh, the oranges. They are going to be full of vitamin C mm -hmm. and folate. So it's, the, so it's the beta carotene that gives it that orange yep. color, whether mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a, whether it's a carrot, whether it's a mango, it's that it's that yep. beta carotene that does it. All the just curious about this stuff, you know. All right, I am just cutting these fairly thin because I'm we're we're not going to be cooking these. These are just going to be done raw, uh, and I didn't uh, peel them. I just you know you, that's optional. Um, just. For, you know, some less waste, I like to uh, just leave the peel on. If I'm going to have something very fancy and um, or, or like a, a, a very delicate sauce that I would use, I would probably I would probably peel the carrot. But the, can, the, the peel can sort of make the rest of the dish a little bit bitter. Um, but I find that it's not a not a big issue in this um, in this case here. So. All right, so we're going to toss our carrots in our in a separate bowl now, and I'm going to go over to the orange here. You can um, yield the orange like um, like you like a like a uh, normal person would, or if you were trying to, or, or if you wanted to do it like a like a like a fancy chef person in a professional kitchen. Um, this is how we would do it. We would peel. With our knife, trying to get all of the white out. There's actually quite a bit of nutrients in the white part, though, isn't there? 
Absolutely. And Very. the fiber too. Fiber too. Yeah. So it's kind of missing out on that, but, um, but I'm not going to be, um, supreming, which is, which is, um, cutting in between these membranes here. I wouldn't be, where's my camera? Uh, so I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be, uh, cutting it straight down. So we're actually getting, um, most of the fiber, uh, anyway. Um, and then some of this orange juice is going to, um, you know, help to uh, flavor the rest of the uh, vegetables here. And I'm just cutting these up into, I don't know what's that about, half inch, three quarters of an inch. Um, yeah. All right. How about some mango? Uh, so let's mango. Go ahead. Sorry. I'm enjoying all this. I Good wish point. I was there so I could taste it. <laughs> I can smell. Yeah, there's a lot of nice smells coming on here with the uh, with that orange. Um, so if you've never done a mango before, um, and by the way, you don't have to actually, you know, follow the recipe. I think I mentioned this uh, exactly uh, as it is. Um, some of, you can actually do this with frozen vegetables too. Frozen vegetables and fruit. Uh, like I, I'm, I'm thinking of that because uh, sometimes out of season we can get mangoes that are frozen, you know, are pre diced, that sort of thing, um, and fairly inexpensive um, at, the, at the grocery store. So, um, but if you don't can't, don't have access to mangoes or whatever, that that's certainly fine too. Oranges. Um, now we're coming into the summer. Naval oranges are not that um, in season right now. Um, more of the juicing oranges are, um, so you're not getting as much of the orangeness here in the summertime, but, uh, other orange things you could do, um, uh, apricots are coming into season now, peaches, nectarines, that's kind of the orange yellow area. So, um, yeah, so, uh, feel free to substitute. The point again is to, um, to have, you know, those multiple colors take advantage of, um, this whole uh this whole season of beautiful colors in our food all right so i'm going to cut off both ends just so i have a nice um oh this is going to be a good one see that so nice i can tell because by it uh it it it's it, um it's fairly not super soft but it, it gives a little bit so um uh, that i can tell is a um a very ripe mango too so that that would be great again i'm going to um peel peel it with my knife um uh, but you'll see that there is a there's a big pit that runs this way let's see if i can uh so if you you lay it down on the counter or uh, your counter and and you roll it it'll lay so you know that the pit is going this way so that's the one way you can actually um be able to cut around it all right and a very sharp uh and a knife with a thin blade helps to help so you don't actually you know uh take off too much of the flesh there are many ways to peel peel a mango or eat a mango um i've had one of the late the latest thing i like to do is just kind of without peeling it or anything just kind of squish it up and um and then lop off one of the ends and then just sort of sort of uh drink the the pulp out of it and um that's really, really yummy. All right. I won't demonstrate that one, though. Kind of messy. Chef, I have a question. Oh, yes. Where, Where's the best place to store a mango, a fresh mango? Yeah, if you have, if it's, uh, if you're trying to, um, uh, if you're trying to ripen it, uh, if it's from the store, it's a little hard. Uh, best place to do that is like on a countertop or kind of next to the window. But uh, you know, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. You know, I wouldn't say like directly in the sun or anything like that. You know, I, I don't okay. think you really want to um, speed up that um, speed up that a little too much. But um, yeah, that's the best place to do that. Once it's once it's full, like I said, give it, it gives a little bit when you press on it. Um, then, then you're, you're, you can eat it or put it in the fridge. 
um, to sort of slow down the ripening process. So uh, yeah, to start out with, I would keep it out on the counter. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna cut right around the pit. I'm kind of feeling my way here as I go around. Um, so we've got, There we are, and I just like to kind of get as much off as I can. From that pit, and there you have a slippery pit. All right, uh, and then you can just go ahead and dice that up with, um, or cut it any, any way you'd like. Um, these are just obviously suggestions. Uh, and I like to, Dice these up as well. And I think that's looking good. I'm going to set the rest aside. Yeah, I have a we'll question for you, Chef. Um, what type of knife are you using? Yeah. This is a, um, it's called a Santoku knife. Uh, so this is kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, 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 there it is. Um, so it's like a chef knife, um, but it's also kind of like a cleaver shape. So you can actually lift your knife off the table or the cutting board and use it as kind of a, as a cleaver. Um, the brand, I don't, I think this is kind of an off brand here that we use, a uh, less expensive one here at work. Um, but, um, a lot of the, I, I would, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go cheap with a, with a knife uh, simply because it's, it, it's, you know, you get to what you paid for. So it's not, uh, uh, it's not going to last as long if you don't, if you go um, like, you know, a $10 knife or whatever, as opposed to a $50 knife. Um, it, it, it's kind of an investment and, but it's, uh, it, it, it's worth it, I think. So, um, but this, this uh, kind of knife also is, uh, is a great way to, um get used in in many different ways um and one of the ways i like it is you really cut around that the <clears throat> excuse me the fruit you saw how that just slid right through the onion that slid right through the fruit so it's got a very thin blade i don't know if you can yeah you probably can't really see that um as opposed to like a chef's knife uh which has a really a thicker blade so it's not uh it, you don't get as fine detail work um and uh so i would i would highly recommend a knife like that um teaching kitchens we use the ones in person that we do um every so often here in uh in the twin city uh uh we use those kinds of knives so if anybody's interested in that sort of thing um we certainly can uh we'll be able to practice practice knife skills in those classes. All right, so we've got our orange, orange slash yellow. All right, on to purple. <laughs> Moving right along. Actually, we're gonna, I'm going to actually do uh, the green one first because I know I have to cook that in the oven. And um, while that's cooking, I will do the purple. So we've got our green. Um, and we're just going to do a little bit of zucchini and um, broccoli. Certainly pick your own green, too. We could use the beet greens like we talked about earlier. You could use um, pea pods. Really great this time of year as well. So any, you know, any of those things uh, would be um, certainly appropriate. All right, I'm going to cut this in fairly small little florets, and I'm going to roast these at about, uh, I've got a convection oven here at work, so this is probably going to be uh, 375 on a convec convection oven, so you probably want to turn that up a little bit higher to like 400 or so if you don't have a convection oven, so that would be, uh, that would be it's a pretty good, um, pretty similar uh, result. So, cutting it up fairly small. Broccoli can take quite a while in the in the oven if they're if it's not cut up. All 
All right. I think I'm going to stop there. And some zucchini here. Uh, obviously, it's not going to take as long as the broccoli, so uh, I'm going to just cut these up in a little bit of like little, what would you call that, quarter moon? All right. Well, maybe this is a good time where I can interject on the health benefits of eating the green vegetables. And I love that you're yeah, keeping the skin it. on the zucchini because that's where all the fiber's at. But in addition, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. you're getting vitamins K, vitamin C, little potassium. Yeah. So what's the what's what's the zucchini has got the potassium? And they both do. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of I kind of perk up when I hear potassium <laughs> because because I have some I have a uh, little bit of um, high blood pressure issue going on. So you know, want more potassium. So uh, my doc says anyway. Um, leafy vegetable, leafy green vegetables, mm -hmm. and um, and the potassium. So yeah, I did not I did not know that. I absolutely like the right, way pudding. you're going to prepare the chicken, too. So if people are um, trying to manage their sodium intake, once we get to the chicken portion, it looks like it's going to be a great way to just use herbs and spices and avoid the salt shaker. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I put a little bit of um, canola oil on the, uh, uh, on the green, huh? and then I'm just going to put a little salt and pepper. And what I did, I mean, if you, we've talked about this before, um, I... Uh, just some kosher salt and some cracked black pepper that has been um, that has been mixed together with that. So um, it helped us to, to, you know, hold back a little bit on the sodium. All right. So give this a little talk. And I've got an oven going on behind me. So I'm going to go off camera for just a little bit. And um, once I get these from the oven, we'll come back and do the purple. All right, and then this, I said 375 convection oven, 400 non-convection. Uh, it's going to take maybe 10, 10, 15 minutes or so. I'll be right back. Well, while we're waiting for Chef to get back, I can say a little bit about the purple blend because it's going to be featuring a lot of berries and we're entering berry season. So um, this is the time where you can do the you pick um, berries. Um, check them out also at the farmer's market. They are coming into prime season when it comes to the berries. So I'm um, looking forward to this recipe. Um, some other things to mention when it comes to fruits and vegetables, uh, you know, what is a serving? So there's a quick way to use your hand as a reference. So when it comes to eating a serving of fruit, you want to do a fistful. And this applies for, you know, all ages, because if you're a toddler, you have a smaller fist. So that's about the size a toddler should eat as you go up, you know, adolescent, adult. So a fistful of fruits and when it comes to vegetables a serving would be a handful now for both of these you can go over we want you to eat more fruits and vegetables our diets don't have enough in it so it's okay to eat an additional amount so use your hand as a reference ah, so uh, so <clears throat> excuse me so the the fist is for what did you say now fruit and fruit and a vegetables fist or is a like a fruitful like um think of like an orange or an apple it's a fistful but then ah, if okay, it's so like serving yep and then if it's leafy greens or cooked zucchini you want a handful which would be kind of a little bit larger and like i said you can go above okay. both of those because we want to encourage more fruits and vegetables right right ah cool i'm wearing all sorts of nice tricks from you all right, so 
uh, what do we have here? We've got um, purple. Um, <laughs> as Terry mentioned, um, a lot of berries coming into season here. Uh, blackberries is like one of my favorites. Um, and of course, our uh, blueberries and some grapes here. Um, this is a great way to um, actually get, uh, we're going to be marinating this with a little bit of balsamic vinegar and a little bit of sugar. What I wanted to say was that it's a, a great way where you can actually cut the berries and some of that juice will release um, and mix in with the, with the uh, balsamic vinegar and sugar to, to sort of give you um, give a little bit of twist to that, but still holding it, um, maintaining its uh, in, uh, flavor and integrity. I'll, I'll use that term. So um, if you get, you know, big berries like this, um, you can actually cut them like I was talking about. Um, the grapes, you don't have to cut them, but I'm going to cut them just so that they, uh, so that I have a little bit of, um, you know, cut surface where the, uh, where the marinade can actually get in. Um, so I'm just going to hold my hand over that and just do the horizontal cut. We've, we've done this one before other classes so and there we have our um grapes um blackberries yeah i'm gonna cut these two they're i've got fairly big ones here so uh it helps to have this very sharp knife here to um cut right through these guys and you certainly again you certainly can use like frozen berries or uh that would be that would be you know a great way to do that um, well, I'm going to do these blueberries as well. So yeah, if you don't have access to these um, sort of fresh berries, or if you uh -huh. want to do this recipe at a different time of year when it's not available, um, yeah, that's definitely be able to uh, substitute. All right. And uh, this is just balsamic vinegar with a little bit of brown sugar mixed in to uh, counteract the, the vinegar flavor on a pungent piece. All right, so then, yeah, I don't want to make it swimming in there. I just want to hold it a little bit. And Chef, I do want to mention, um, you know, if someone is choosing a frozen berry, which are tremendously convenient um, and long lasting, they have the same nutritional value. So berries are fantastic. They have been thought to be immune boosting. Uh, they have that beautiful purple color from their antioxidants. Um, uh, they have anthocyanins mm. in them, um, but frozen fruit is going to have all the nutritional bang, um, just like the fresh counterpart. Great, great. Anthrocyanin, that, that, that's one of my favorite words lately. <laughs> <laughs> How many syllables is it? It's a mouthful. Anthrocyanin, yeah. That's, next, that's a nice one. <laughs> All right, oh, I should show you this, what I'm doing here. So I've got a little bit of mixture in there. It's starting to release some of the liquid already, so you got a little bit of sauce going on. And uh, for this whole kind of uh, dish that we're doing today, uh, you certainly don't need um, uh, an, an extra sauce like a, uh, um, I'm, I'm thinking like an avocado yogurt, kind of a drizzle on there for your, for like a, like you would have on a regular grain bowl. Um, not necessary. We've got a lot of different flavors going on in the different kinds of the fruits and vegetables. We certainly can add more flavor to it, but um, certainly not necessary. There's a lot of flavor going on right here. All right. Should we take a pause and see if there's any questions from those tuning in? Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. I'm going to turn on my uh, my um, saute pan here so we can actually do some chicken now. We had a question about the balsamic vinegar to brown sugar ratio. Is that two teaspoons to two teaspoons? And can you vary that? Uh, you definitely can vary that. Um, this is actually more like a four to one ratio uh, of, what I, of what we did today. 
Um, and you could certainly use something else. You could use, um, you know, honey or agave syrup or something like that. Just to, uh, you need a little bit of sweetener to um, counteract that uh, the vinegar in there. But yeah, that's uh, you don't you don't need much. Balsamic vinegars tend to be a little sweeter as uh, uh, on their own. Uh, and then, of course, if you get the really expensive, you know, ones that have been aged. For I don't know, ten years or whatever. That's those are some syrupy sweet. You really don't need to add anything to that. Um, but yeah, so that's um, that's the uh, that's the uh, that's that's pretty much the ratio I'm using here, four to one, four vinegars to one uh, sugar. I'm gonna move my coffee pan in here while we get ready. Answer some more questions here. Any other questions out there? Now's your chance. If you have questions, feel free to type them into the Q&A feature. All right. So I'm just going to move this a little over here and ready for our chicken. I've got, uh, I've got a, uh, can we move on here? Uh, I'm going to wait any. I'm going to check my time here. I think we should actually get the chicken cooking. It might take a little bit. Um, and just feel free to ask any questions too. We can, we can uh, uh, you know, pause and uh, answer a few questions as well. So, um, so I've got a couple of, these are four to five ounce chicken breasts, boneless, skinless. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, Terry had mentioned earlier about uh, utilizing uh, fresh herbs and lemon, um, uh, sort of allowing you to cut back more on uh, more on your, your sodium. Um, and so we are using um, basil, crushed parsley, and some fresh rosemary. Uh, and I'm just going to give this a quick chop. Um, I like to do my, you know. I think we talked about the mise en place. We've uh, I've definitely mentioned that a couple of times in the previous class. Um, so we want to make sure we are, you know get everything done. Uh, all uh, all of the uh, all of our prep work done before we actually do any um, cooking. So um, so I want to get all this done first. Um, and I don't want to actually put the herbs on here quite yet. I'm just going to season it with salt and pepper, a little bit of uh, canola oil in the pan, uh, and then get it brown on both sides. And then I'm going to add my, my herbs after that and put it in the oven to finish. Otherwise, your herbs are just going to burn on your, um, on your chicken breast. So a great way to maintain that, um, maintain that uh, flavor of the herbs. A little Italian parsley. You know, if you don't have fresh herbs too, I mean, dry herbs are just fine. Uh, you probably want to use a, a little bit less of the dry herbs because they are dry, they are dehydrated. Um, and so then once they get rehydrated, they will, um, um, they will, they will release their flavors. Um, so you kind of want to do less of your dried herbs. Um, if you're if you're following in the uh, the recipe, all right. So I'm gonna have some um, lemon zest as well, and I'm just gonna let this sit right in my little microplane here. So um, yeah, I think that's gonna be good. All right. So then you notice I have this sitting on uh, my chicken breast sitting on uh, paper towels here. So I just kind of want to have it as dry as possible so that it gets a nice brown color on it. Otherwise, if it has if it's wet and you put it in the pan, it's just kind of kind of, you know, simmer and, and not really brown. So um, I like to do that with, you know, anything with fish or with tofu or with, uh, with the chicken here. So uh, I'm going to add a little bit of the canola oil. And I've got my half and half salt and pepper. 
and a little lightly on that. And a little bit on the other side as well. Chef, can you repeat what type of oil that was? I want to make sure I'm using the right one. Sure, yeah, this is canola oil. Canola oil? Yeah, canola. All right, my pan is super hot. And then I'm just going to turn that. It was on medium, and I think I've got to turn that up a little bit to medium high. Um, Yeah, there we go. So it's at a medium high right now, and that will, um, you'll notice I'm not touching it. I'm not going to uh, like move it around or try to move it around. I'm going to just let it sit and get a nice brown color on it. Um, so then when I flip it over, I'm gonna put my herbs and my lemon on, on, the, uh, on the side that's already been browned. And then we'll be ready to pop that in the oven. And our green vegetables should be all set to go. All right. I'm just thinking if we were to make a substitution with the protein, um, are there any fish selections you would recommend? Oh yeah, the uh, uh, salmon uh, is the okay. first one I go to. Right, I, I love mm -hmm. that. Um, also, if you have like a, a any kind of a you know cod would be a cod cod would be good on that as well. It's, uh, mahi mahi uh, is mm -hmm. another one would be great. Um, you know, a tuna would be you know if you have a nice little tuna steak, a nice medium rare would be great mm -hmm. as well. Um, so and you know you could do you could do shrimp. Um, other kinds of other kinds of uh, shellfish as well. Scallops would be great on there. All right, so got a little browning action going on, and I'm just going to toss on some fresh herbs. Well, I'm going to actually put the lemon and I'll just on there first, just so it kind of makes contact with the. Uh, with the uh, chicken breast first, and then I'm going to pack on the uh, the fresh mixed herbs. I mix them all together here, and then um, I'm going to save a little bit of the fresh herbs to, at the very end, so then I can just sort of dress it up. Um, give a little squeeze of lemon juice, um, and then that will be our finished product when it comes out of the oven in about oh. Let's say since it's pretty thin, it maybe take five minutes in the convection oven as uh, you know at the three seventy five. All right, I'm gonna go grab the uh, go maybe grab now's the, the time to vegetables. see if we have any other questions that have come up from the chat. Yeah. Yes, um, one question is, what about tilapia? Ooh, tilapia, yeah. That's another. That's another great white fish. fish. Uh, yeah, white fish to use. Definitely. And also, are you using a cast iron skillet? Uh, this is actually a. Um, uh, I'll come in the camera view here. <laughs> um, it, it's actually a high carbon steel pan, uh, kind of like if you've ever had a. Um, if you've ever had a wok uh, that you've used, that same that same material there. Um, it, it takes a lot, a little more maintenance. Um, you have to kind of like uh, season it um, and make sure you're not make sure it doesn't rust or whatever. Kind of kind of like you would do a, a cast iron pan, but, but cast iron pan would will work great with that as well. So um, that, that would be another another uh, great substitution. All right, so you'll see I've got our green here, nice and crispy. Broccoli is awesome that way. Those little florets get nice and crispy. Uh, I'm just going to set this in the uh, bowl just so I have just so I have all of them and uh, all the colors in in the bowl. 
Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, that's really good. All right. So that chicken is cooking right now. All right, Chef, I have a question for come. you. Well, yeah, go I, right ahead. The green vegetables looked cooked to perfection. Um, that doesn't always happen in my kitchen. Um, if I overcook, let's say, broccoli and it's too browned, is there anything else I can do with it so I don't have to throw it out? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if I could mix it in. If it was like, it, 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 does it turn like really bitter then? Are you, have you eaten it or is it like black? Uh, how, well, how overdone are you talking? Not, not black, but you know, there's just like a sweet spot for when you're trying to feed kids too. So I cooked a little too much so they won't eat it, but I don't want to throw it out. You know, can I use it in, I don't know, pasta? Are there any ways yeah, that I, I can... Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, you could certainly use, utilize it in, in like in a pasta or a pasta salad okay. uh, or a fried rice. You could even do that in there, throw, toss okay. that with some, you know, with some egg and soy sauce and, and, and other and what, whatever else you like in there. Um, yeah, you could uh, or you could actually put it in a, um, you know, put it in a blender and make some sort of a, a green goddess type of dressing, um, okay. which would make it a give it a. Um, um sort of a nuttier flavor with that mm -hmm. with, with the uh sort of the brown broccoli that, that mm -hmm. would that would be really good as well yeah no that yeah. sounds great yeah we have two questions that came in oh yeah first question yes, would apple would apple cider vinegar work in place of red wine vinegar absolutely yep yep you can use, you can use apple cider vinegar um any of the vinegars would be would be good. Um, the darker vinegars, like the balsamic vinegar, you can, um, depending on what color you're going for, uh, the balsamic vinegar is probably going to turn whatever you toss it in, you know, darker. Um, that's why we kind of use that in the um, uh, in the purple uh, color. So, um, yeah, yeah, the, the apple cider vinegar is just, you know, just fine. Another question is, could you use olive oil instead of canola oil? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can um, be careful if, uh, how high of heat you're using it and what kind of olive oil it is. If it's if it's an extra virgin olive oil, uh, which means it's the first pressing of the olive and it's got the most um, flavor and the, the most um, um, fruitiness or floralness in there. Uh, you're going to want to take advantage of that. Um, of the, of the fruitiness of the olive oil to, do, to use it raw, uh, like in a salad or or on you know at the end of your pasta dish or whatever. Um, but if it's more like a what they call a pure olive oil, um, which is one of the other one of the successive pressings, and it's probably it's most likely mixed with some sort of other vegetable oil. Um, the reason being is if you have the first press of the olive oil and you put it on high heat, it's going to smoke um, and burn. Uh, and all that fruitiness is just going to, you know, dissipate when you won't, you'll, you'll have smoke in the house and then you'll have uh, funky tasting um, oil. So save the extra virgin olive oil for using it as a raw um, addition to your salad dressing, your dressing, your, at the end of the olive oil, at the end of pasta dishes, that sort of thing. Um, you could also use, you know, extra virgin olive oil cut with some canola oil. Uh, that will help raise that um, the the smoke point of it, so it doesn't smoke at such a lower temperature. But yeah, definitely use your use that olive oil whenever you can to get the flavor of that uh, flavor of that olive oil. Had some really great questions so far. Yeah, I like the participation. Sometimes we just have um we're just talking by ourselves and <laughs> there's no dialogue there's no questions so this is great all right so i'm gathering all my items together i'm just going to go check on the uh chicken those that's almost ready to go 
Um, that again was cooked at the same temperature as the green over here. Um, the green over here, that's my camera. Uh, so, uh, 375 convection oven, um, and that's and a very pretty thinly cut. Um, if you can't find a chicken breast that's um, as thin as thin cut as I did it, you can actually pound it out. Um, use a you know use the back of a pan or a meat mallet or whatever whatever you can find uh, to kind of spread that out to make it in one uh, 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 consistent thin layer. All right, so here's our brown rice. I don't know if I told you that. So this is actual um, this is real brown rice, not <laughs> not like the uh, converted style. So there's um, uh, lots of nutrients, lots of fiber in that. If you want to take a talk a little bit about that, I'm scary as I'm going to check on the chicken and maybe some other substitutions for for a brain. Absolutely. So right I love that you're using brown rice. Um, if you were to swap it out, I would consider doing another whole grain, maybe a farro wheat, um, a quinoa, um, which would be naturally gluten free. Um, I'm thinking uh, if you want to make this lower in carbohydrate, um, maybe you could do a cauliflower rice, and that would add yet another vegetable to our wonderful rainbow of uh, fruits and vegetables here. Yeah. Um, but those would all be um, great substitutes. And when you're choosing whole grains, those are going to up the fiber and the protein. So if you were to maybe omit the chicken portion in this, because let's say you're following a vegetarian or a vegan diet, I would encourage doing a whole grain, maybe even add in like a lentil so you could get some more protein. Oh, yeah. Lentils would be great. All right. So I'm going to running out of room here. All right. Um, I just wanted to show you the chicken here before I. So where's my camera here? Here's my chicken. Um, and I'm just going to sort of add a little more, um, kind of a little lemon juice on the top of that. Yeah, I'll put that on the other side too, so we can add a little more of the uh, pressure to that. And it's best, I would say, it's best to uh, add that lemon juice just as it's coming out of the oven. It'll it'll absorb uh, the heat will help absorb that uh, lemon right into the right into the, um, the middle of the chicken. A little lemon zest on there. And then a little more of the fresh food. Green. That's another green part, right? Uh -huh. I mean, there's uh, there's nutrition in herbs, right? We've, you've doubled up on the green. Got everything yeah. covered. Right. I've been, I like to grow herbs in the summertime around here in Minnesota. It's the only time we can really grow herbs outside, uh, of course. And so I'm, was um, interested to know that there are there are like health benefits to herbs other than just you know sort of the you know flavoring something is that is that right am i am i uh right in that assumption absolutely i think that I mean, the primary <laughs> um i think herbs are a great way to be a substitute for sodium um, there could be some additional benefits. It's not going to get you fiber and strict vitamins and minerals, but there could be some health benefits to it. Ah, like okay. the ginger sure. or like a, a cayenne and garlic. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I'm just going to put this all kind of almost like a buffet style here. And this is a, this is about a cup of uh, brown rice, so that would be like two servings, would you say, Carrie? Yep. Well, two servings for, uh, you know, a cup. Uh, you mentioned the the, the uh, hand, a handful. Yeah. That's probably about right. Yeah, depending on who would be eating the meal, you know, um, the age, um, a, a cup of the grain would be maybe reduce it for someone a little bit older or less active. Yeah. I mean, a cup for two people, 
That's what I'm saying. Two adults. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. And you're going okay, to, with all just these to, fruits and vegetables, you are going to feel very full. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Your fiber intake is like through the roof in this meal. <laughs> well, seriously, do you have to take really into consideration if you're not used to eating this sort of thing? Would that be digestive issues? But you would probably want to drink some more water. I mean, you don't want to go from oh. zero to 30, you know. <laughs> Make it too big right. of a swing. <laughs> right. Okay. Coming into the home stretch here, people. Hang in there. The color variety yeah. is spectacular. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. And as I was saying earlier, I mean, this would be great for like a picnic outside. If I mean, Put it out on a buffet table. Uh, just have people come and, you know, take a little bit of this, take a little bit of that. And there you've got our uh, rainbow of... Where's my camera? There it is. <laughs> there we go. And Absolutely we are all gorgeous. Yeah. 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 And I did I did the beets ahead of time, the uh rice ahead of time, but other than that, this stuff is can be made, you know, um an hour and a half or so. I mean if you have if you have a little bit of time on your hands, I mean it comes together fairly quickly. Um the recipes for the uh for the veggies and um, fruit are fairly simple, um, mm -hmm. but they give a, you know, a super uh, enhancing that their their flavors. So that that would be uh, a fairly fairly simple um, way of eating your veggies. <laughs> this looks great, and I think and for it, convenience, you know, we could uh, if you needed to save time in the kitchen, you could do frozen, right? Or even, um, yep, I've seen absolutely. big beets in the produce section that are already roasted and they're refrigerated. Yeah. Um, another you option. Can, can beets, too. Can beets, can beets pickled true. beets, yep. that sort of thing. Sure. Yep. yep. All right. Looks like we're a little bit over a minute or so. So, But um, thanks, everyone, for joining in. I hope you try this. This is, um, this is, uh, I'm going to use my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You've inspired us all. Right, check it out. It's good. Good stuff. All right. Thank you, Chef. All right. Great. Thanks, thank everyone. you, Carrie. Thank Hi. you, Chef. Uh, thank you, everyone. Again, you can find these recipes on the Let's Move page in the Let's Get Cooking section. So uh, type that in the Q&A there, Let's Move by UHC.com. Type in your United Healthcare username and password. Navigate to the Let's Get Cooking section, and that's where you will find these recipes. So thank you again for joining us. Um, we'll be having another virtual teaching kitchen next month, so be on the lookout for that on July 25th. I think it's July 25th. Um, that sounds great. Yep. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Be sure to register, put it on your calendar, and uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you.